Another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Lee, our play is titled Hideaway, and just before we went on the air, you mentioned something about this play being somewhat of a busman's holiday for you. What's the story? Well, Ken, it's exactly that. I play an actor. It's a fast-moving story, Ken, and I think our audience will enjoy it. We'll be ready for the first act after your short but vital message. Okay, Lee, my message concerns the security of this great nation. If we're to live in peace and freedom among ourselves and with other nations, the cooperation of each and every one of us is needed now. One way that the young men and young women can do their part is by joining the United States Army. Visit your local recruiting station. They'll gladly tell you how you can serve both your country and yourself now when you're needed most. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Charles Terry, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Hideaway. <laughs> Charles Terry was not only a good actor, he was also a very busy one. Commuting between New York and Hollywood was a regular habit. A play here, a movie there, a guest appearance tour somewhere in between. Round and round he went. And finally, one spring day, as he sat in a producer's office, a sudden realization came to him. It may have been brought on by the clouds of unappetizing smoke that busily fogged the room. Harry Beck, Terry's manager, wore a cigar as though it were a garment. Terry often said if cigars were taken away from his manager, he'd shrivel up and blow away. Well, at any rate, the room was full of smoke and noise when Charles Terry shut his ears on the bedlam around him and had his dream. I'm telling you, it's a sensational part. I feel Who's lousy. Who's kissing? We're not kissing. Not We're from fact, I feel downright awful. <laughs> Upon reaching this conclusion, Charles Terry expanded on it. He gave it some deep thought. It's a sensational part. The guy's I just got to get on the beat. I think I'll go to talk about it. I need point. a checkup. Well, what do you expect, anyway? Hey, 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 Charlie, where are you going? I need some air. Hey, 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 wait a minute. You don't need me. You two settle well, it. What do you mean? You just can't get up and walk out of here. This is important. Good. You'll be important. I'm going for a walk. It's a play. It's a fine play. I'll do hey, it. Hey, hey, come back here. The guy's gone nuts. Well, Doc, what's the verdict? Sit down, Mr. Terry. Cigarette? Oh, will I need one? Oh, no, not really. Well, don't, don't look so grim. I'm going to talk to you like a Dutch uncle. There's nothing wrong with you except that you're completely worn out. You need sleep, and you need to relax. You need to go away somewhere where you can be quiet and get some fresh air and rest. In short, Mr. Terry, you need a vacation. How long has it been since you've taken one? <laughs> well, long time, I guess. I've been pretty busy. I'm sure you have. And just how long do you think you can keep it up before something goes really wrong? I, I, I guess I never thought of it. I know. Success breeds success, and work breeds more work. You don't feel well, and I don't wonder. It's just that that thing you're walking around in is giving you fair warning. What thing am I walking around in? Your body. Like everything else, it runs down. Why rush things? You like living, don't you? I haven't found anything that beats it. <laughs> well, if you keep on like this, I won't guarantee how long you last. Oh, sounds serious. It is, unless you take it serious. Mm, well, I guess I gotta better get away from it all, huh? That's my prescription. Kind of silly that I should have to soak you for telling you something your common sense should tell you. Yeah, you're right. I think I'll give my common sense a talking to. <laughs> I would. Look, didn't you just close a play? Yeah, Detour. 
We closed it last week. And what are your plans now? Oh, well, I... Well, we're thinking of, about starting rehearsals for a new play. Oh, that's just fine. It's a good play. I'm sure it is. Just skip it, huh? Can't you put it off for a month or two? I don't say it's necessary to give up your work, but do you know of any other actor who keeps up the pace you do? <laughs> you know, I, I'm beginning to think you've got something. Well, thank goodness. From now on, between everything you do, you should take a good rest. A month, two months, and don't tell me you can't afford it. <laughs> I guess I can, all right. <laughs> I don't know about Harry. Who's Harry? My manager. <laughs> He'll be awfully sore. Well, what does he do, own you? Well, you know... Oh, keep talking, Doc. You make an awful lot of sense. I tell you, I'm going nuts. Nobody knows where he is. I've called everybody. I've looked everywhere. Charlie's just completely vanished. What? That's right. We were supposed to start rehearsal Tuesday. Feinberg's mad than a stood-up chorus girl. I'm madder than that. He can't do this to me. I got a contract. What? No, I know he's okay. He wrote me a note. Here, I'll read it to you. Dear Harry, I need a rest. This is too big for the both of us. Don't try to find me. I'll see you in about a month or a year. Love and kisses to all your wandering boy. What? Well, sure he's nuts, but what am I going to do about it? Look, you know him almost as well as I do. Do you know any place at all where he might have gone? Some place where he wouldn't be noticed? Nah, that's out. Ah. What cabin? Where? Hey, let me get this down. Okay, go ahead. Yeah? Yeah? Does it have a telephone? You think it'll be in his name? Well, I'll give it a try, and if that doesn't work, I'll go up there and drag him back. Oh, what a beautiful morning. da 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 This I don't like. Hmm. Maybe I just better go outside and let it ring. If it's Harry and I answer, he'll come up here. Hmm. Eh, I should have had that thing taken out. Who, uh, the Randolph Hunt Club? Are you there? Harry, you cut that out. Sorry, you must have the wrong number. No, we know no such fellow. Now, stop playing games. This is serious. All right. What do you want, Harry? What? what do I want? Have you gone completely nuts? Yes. Now, look, what are you trying to do? Ruin the both of us? You're going to do a play, remember? Which play was that? I've done so many lately. Oh, cut it out, will you? Fine for blowing his top rehearsals are set for Tuesday. You, you don't have the gal cast yet, and you start playing cute. Harry, the play will be just as good a month or two from now. What do you mean? I mean I need a rest, and I'm taking one. Doctor's orders. Huh? What's the matter, you sick? No, I'm fine. And that's just the way I'm going to stay. Tell Feinberg to put his top back on, and you cool off, too. I haven't had a decent rest in ten years, and I'm taking one as of now. But you can't! Dry your tears and be a big, brave man. I'm coming up there and get you. Listen, Harry, you're my manager, and I love you. But I got a shotgun here, and it's loaded with rock salt. Do I make myself clear? Harry, you would. I would. And if you or anyone else comes up here, I will. And after all, I'm done for you. I'm crying great, large, crocodile tears. I'll be back when I've had my rest. And to make sure that you and none of your fine-feathered friends disturb my rest, I'm going to take this large, sharp knife and cut this wire. Hey, you can! I can, Harry. And I have. <laughs> did it take a doctor to think of this? Why couldn't I do it all by myself? <laughs> this is the life. Two weeks of peace 
peace and quiet. I think I'll have two more. And then maybe two more after that. <laughs> maybe I'll never go back to work again. Oh, me, oh. Wait. What? What? Huh? All right, take it easy. Please, please hide me. They're after me. What? what, what who? Who closed the door? Lock it quickly. Well, who, who's after you? Who are you? What's this all about? Oh, please don't ask questions. Now there isn't time. Isn't there some place to hide me? How about the closet? Oh, no, no. That's the first place they'd look. Who will look? Is there a cellar? No. no. How about the wood chest? Oh, that'll have to do. Oh, please. Please don't let them get me. Would you light long enough to tell me who the devil's after there you? There is a time. Will you please understand? Here, here. Let me help you. Now, close the lid. And don't let them open it. Please. Hmm. Polite girl. What's this all about? Uh-oh. Here come the hounds. Well, maybe I'd just better hold on to this shotgun for ballast. Coming, Mother. Well, good evening. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, sorry to bother you. My name is Shay. This is me. How do you do? Now, what can I do for you? Uh, may we come in? We can talk better inside. All right. We'll all talk inside. Uh, you uh, live here all alone? All alone. And uh, your name is... Uh... I'm uh, Henry the Fourth of France, in disguise. A comic. My name is Terry, Charles Terry. Now, what's the trouble? Stop looking around my living room like you're on a treasure hunt. Thanks. There's a bedroom in there, the kitchen's out there, and the bath is off the kitchen. Uh, sorry, Mr. Terry, we're looking for a young woman. Her name is Catherine Richard. She's worth about ten million bucks, and uh, she's uh, nuttier than a fruitcake. Oh. Uh, who do you represent? I should have said I'm Lieutenant Shea, and this is Sergeant Hink of the police department. And, of course, you have something to prove it. Yeah, this will satisfy you. Oh. Uh, looks very nice. We trace Catherine Richard to the path that leads up here. Uh, she isn't here, is she? No, no. Unless she came in when I wasn't looking. Well, what do you want her for? Her uncle is trying to keep her out of trouble in the mental institution. Uh, we just want to take her back to him. You say she's kind of off her rocker? Been good. Thinks we've been hired to bump her off. Thinks her uncle's after her dough. Sweetest old guy you'd ever want to meet. You're from the city, of course. That's right. 24th Precinct. 24th? Well, well, you must know uh, a Dick Ty and uh, Jack McMurray. Mm. Uh, oh, yes. Know him well. Dick's an old friend of mine. Good old Dick. Uh, give him my regards when you see him. Well, Mr. Terry, do you mind if we sort of uh, look your place over? She might have snuck in when you weren't looking. Well, uh, according to my old friend Dick, Lieutenant, you've got to have a search warrant to look over my humble little home. I think you have to take my word for it. Nobody's here but us mice. And if I happen to run into this girl you're talking about, I'll be sure to give you a ring. Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, Sergeant. <laughs> You can come out now, little Nell. How are they gone? For the time being. What? Why didn't you believe them? They always sound so convincing. I'm used to people who sound convincing. They sounded like a couple of third-rate hams to me. That malarkey about the 24th precinct. I don't know any Dick Ty or Jack McMurray at any precinct. I don't even know what a precinct is. <laughs> well, uh, Catherine Richards. We may have a, an interesting evening ahead of us. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Charles Terry in the proudly we hail production of Hideaway, will return for the second act in just a moment. Right now, I'd like to recall the words of General Eisenhower when he took over the post of Supreme Commander of the Western European Military Forces. In effect, he asked, 
What is it that the free world wants more than anything else, and how much are we ready to do for it? Well, one thing the young men and women of America can do is to join the United States Army. They'll not only be helping to defend freedom, but they'll also be carving out useful careers. Yes, the United States Army offers some of the finest technical training in the world. Visit your local Army and Air Force recruiting station and find out just how you can help your country and yourself. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now, with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Charles Terry, we present the second hideaway. And that's the whole story. Ah, a tragic tale of how great wealth has brought terror and fear of sudden death into the life of our little Nell. The name is Catherine, and right now nothing you can say will sound very funny. Are you sure if they come back, they can't see in through those curtains? Would you like to go back into the wood box? Oh, no, but I just... I have to... one very simple, but it would seem natural question to ask you. Why don't you go to the police? Oh, you don't know my uncle. He'd have them convinced in no time that I was out of my head and suffering from a persecution complex. He's well known and respected. A lovable old gentleman who wouldn't harm a fly. Well, with my help, you could give it a try. I could tell the police about those two Borscht Circuit impersonators. You know, cops don't like guys who impersonate cops. And they might look into your uncle's affairs and find that he was nearly broke and in desperate need of your money. After all, that's what they're in the business for. Well, I went to them once. I tell you, they won't believe me. He, he's entirely too clever. Well, I'll, uh, I'll call him up and tell him I've got a couple of flowers outside. You're going to call New York City just for that? No, I'll get the local constable. He'll get a, a posse together, and we'll have those two fellas hung before sunrise. You think this is all a big joke, don't you? No, but I don't see any reason to panic. Keep the comic spirit. I shall protect you, little Nell, from all that lurks in the bushes. Uh-oh, I forgot about the phone. What do you mean? The wires cut. Oh, no. They, they cut the wires. I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little Bowie knife. You did? Why? I don't know. It got in the way. I kept uh, tripping over it. You feel all right, don't you, Mr. Perry? I, I really don't know, my child. There are periods when, when there is nothing. Huh? Only a red fog pressing in from all sides. Oh, quick, into the wood oh. box. We're surrounded. Now, see if you can act like a piece of hickory. Good evening, sir. My name is Henry McComb. Henry McComb of the Ready Mix Mattress Company. That's me all over, friendly Henry. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Just want to ask you a question. How are the springs in your mattress? Think carefully before you answer that. It's important. Mighty important. Mr. McComb, I think I can safely say the springs in my mattress are of a rare and enchanting quality. They were especially spun for me from pure strands of fool's gold by that great alchemist and magician, the son of Merlin, from the picture of the same name. These are springs, the like of which mortal man has never seen or heard. They allow me to sleep, and they soothe my dreams with the mighty uplifting chords of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Uh, Mr. McComb, I'm glad you asked that question, for I have been wanting, hello, these many years to answer it. I feel grateful indeed that you've given me the opportunity. And now, Mr. McComb, good night, farewell, and may the leprechauns spring you on your way. Uh... <laughs> 
The all clear has found it. Well, who was it? A wandering minstrel. Oh, please, won't you take this a little more seriously? Well, one of us has got to keep calm. I think the best thing to do is to get out the car and drive you to the police station. I'm not without influence. I think I can make them listen. What you've told me makes pretty good sense. I've, I've seen it happen like this a dozen times in the movie. Good plot, too. Cruel uncle wants niece's millions. Tries to drive niece mad. Doesn't work. Tries to convince other people she's mad. No one will listen to niece but the hero. That's me. Builds up to a terrific climax where uncle kills niece and hero and lives happily ever after. I could hit you on the head. Oh, spare me, little Nell. I, oh, get in there quick. This sounds like business. But don't let them in. I'll have to. Now, keep calm. I can bluff them. Take it easy. I'm coming. Well, we're back, Mr. Terry. No. And what is it this time? We got that search warrant. You went to all that trouble? Uh, we have to make sure of things, Mr. Terry. Now, if you'll just step aside. You don't need the warrant. The girl was here, and she left. <laughs> she went uh, that away. I didn't see no girl, and I've been sitting out in them bushes since we was first here. She came through the trees and down the chimney. Uh, let's all go in where it's warmer. Close the door, Hink. Better lock it. Now, look. Let's cut out this nonsense and let me see that search warrant. Uh, this will have to do for now. Hmm. I suppose it's real and it's loaded. To the gills, and I got one too. Isn't that nice? Now, Terry, we don't want any trouble with you. All we want is that dame. Just tell us where you got her hid and we'll go on our way. Dragging your tails behind you. What a funny fellow. You realize I'll report this to the police. Go right ahead. We just want to take the dame back to her uncle. I told you once, she isn't here. Hey, get away from that door. Now, you behave yourself, bub. Where's the key? I swallowed it. Well, I'll just... Never say... mind, Hink. Forget the key. We haven't much time. You look in the kitchen and bedroom, and I'll look here. You're cold. Very cold. Try looking in the fireplace. Or, or better still, uh, get in it yourself. It's nice and warm. Be quiet and stay right where you are. Yeah, uh, what's this thing? The wood box. That's where we put all the stray bodies. But right now, it's full of wood. Yeah, well, I'll just have a look. No, she... Uh, okay, hmm. Miss Richards. Come on out. Hey, I got her. You leave me alone. I won't go with you. You can't make me... Please, Mr. Terry, do something. I could stand on my head, but it wouldn't help. Listen, Shay, you're not going to get away with this. I'm going to the police, and I'm going to holler my head off. He will, too. Mm. I'll get you for breaking and entering, just for a starter. You take your hands off me. Hey, you do that again, and I'll... I'll bat you. You know, Hank, we can't take any chances. Your boy wants to get rid of her one way or another, right? Yeah. So? so this guy, Terry, he's here all alone, see? Uh, suppose his house burns down with him in it. Hey, that sounds real good. I think it has all the elements of a Greek tragedy. Oh, you can't do that. Listen, you know I'm rich. I'll pay you anything you want, but please don't hurt him. Uh, we can't take the chance of him bleating. But he, he won't say anything. Tell them you won't say anything. My dear, it is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done before. There's a far, far better rest I go to than I have ever known. Gee, the guy's making me weak. Uh, I'll bump you off nice and easy like, Terry. You won't feel a thing. That's 40 of you. You do anything to me, and my manager will get you. No! No, leave him alone, you! You beast! Get her away from him, Hink! They'll find a bullet hole in me, and they'll know. Hey, that's right. Okay, we'll just slug them. I'll show you. Get her. All right, cut. Harry. Hiya, boy. Ain't she sensational? You two guys play your parts while you can scram now. Joe's outside. He'll pay you. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Hi, folks. How do you like it, Charlie? Isn't she terrific? Had you convinced, didn't she? Nice piece of work, Kathy. I see. <laughs> 
This was all a little get-together on your part. Yeah, pretty good, eh? I figured it was the only way to let you have a good look at Kathy. You insist on taking a run out, so I had to cut some corners. Now that you've seen what your leading lady can do, maybe you could work on the play right here and save some more time, eh? All a big act, huh? Uh, You scare me out of 50 years' growth uh, just to save some time, huh? uh, Now, 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 don't get sore, Charlie. You you gotta admit it was a pretty classy idea. Oh, real classy. Hey, 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 what are you you doing with that gun? I told you Uh, if you uh, came uh, up here, uh, what I'd uh, do. uh, Start now, moving. Now, look, Charlie, don't get sore. Put down that gun. You, you, you wouldn't shoot old Harry, not your best friend. Run! <laughs> oh, I'm shot. I'm wounded. I'm dead. Help! You, you really shot him. Yeah, <laughs> with a blank. <laughs> I, I hope you're not too angry, Mr. Terry. Please don't be angry. You're, you're pretty good, Kathy. A little overdone, but not bad. You gave it all away, though. Oh, you mean you knew? Sure, but it wasn't all your fault. I'd seen Shay and a couple of things, and oh. how did you know my name was Terry when I never told you? I wondered how you could act so unconcerned. Ha! <laughs> oh, I'm a very brave fella. <laughs> well, okay, we've all had our little game, and... If you want the part in my next play, you won't say a word about my knowing to Harry. Oh, no. Just tell him, because he scared me out of all the rest I've had, I'll have to take another two weeks vacation. (laughs) Positively, the only thing I can do. Doctor's orders. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. But in the meantime, if you're a young man or a young woman interested in planning and starting a successful life work, consider the United States Army. If you enlist, you'll be serving your country at a most critical time. The Army needs you now. So visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Find out for yourself about the many opportunities for service. You'll be doing your part in the fight for freedom. Volunteer today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Hideaway was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. Proudly We Hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, join us in Egypt, searching ancient ruins for a lost pharaoh's tomb. We find the tomb, an ancient curse, and, well, it's an excellent mystery titled, Call on Danger. We hope you'll be with us. Goodbye. Goodbye.